Okay, so I now want to get on to uh, looking at, um, at soft effects. Uh, for this, I'm going to switch the workspace over onto the editing side. Just fill the fill the screen capture area. Okay. So, what can I say about um, about soft effects? It's always been a limitation for regular Nuke users that because the work's done on a shot-by-shot -shot basis, it's difficult to maintain continuity of effects across several concurrent shots. But what Nuke Studio does is it provides us with a solution to this, and this is where soft effects come in. These are essentially real-time GPU effects, but you apply them in the timeline rather than in the Nuke script themselves. And you can apply them to either individual clips, or you can extend them over several clips. So if I just quickly show you where these are, if we see this icon down here, uh, unfortunately that's uh, that's jumping up outside of the screen capture software. But if you're opening New Studio and you click this button, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of um, of scripts. In fact, if I actually break this out a little bit, if I if I just drag this up, I may be able to show this. Here we go. So uh, so we can see that what we've got here is what looks like a subset of standard nuke uh, node effects. That's essentially what they are. They behave in exactly the same way except that they are applied to the timeline rather than on a, on a shot by shot basis inside the script. So if you look through we have basic uh, colour enhancement tools like the grade node and the colour correct node. Node. We have the transform node there. We have a, we have a couple of time effects. And as I said these these are applied and they behave in a very similar way to the way that we would apply uh, them in, in Nuke. And they, they work in a very similar way to the way that uh, effects would be added in an editing program like Adobe Premiere. So let's take a look at how these work. I'll start by adding a soft effect to a single clip. Okay, So I'm just going to magnify in on the timeline a little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit more than that. Let me just come back to the beginning. Let's have a look. Here we go. So one of these timepiece clips. I'll I'll bring this up now. I appreciate that when I'm going into the soft effects, you, the, it is going to disappear off the screen capture area. But you obviously need to see the uh, see the screen for, uh, for this. Okay, so. You can see that I'm, I've zoomed in on one of these um, on one of these images of the uh, of the actor uh, activating the time machine device. So this is completely arbitrary. It's just to show you how a soft effect is applied. So you can see I've selected that clip. I'm going to come into the soft effects and I'm going to choose the mirror, which is, which is actually within the screen capture area, and I'm going to set the horizontal flop. Okay, so we saw that straight away. We saw that that, that actually obviously just flips the uh, the video horizontally. So that, in its simplest form, is how we apply a soft effect, and we can see that that appears in this little band. Let's get it's this little bar on a track by track basis, and that's the soft effect. Okay, and, this, and these behave in a very similar way to uh, to uh, nodes in in New. For example, I can select that, and if I type D then it disables it, so type D again, it enables it, so so on and so forth. So that's very similar to the way that uh, nukes are, uh, Nuke uh, enables and disables individual nodes when they're actually within uh, the context of a script. And they're easy enough to delete, we just select the uh, we just select the soft effect itself and hit the delete button and that has now disappeared from there. Okay, I'm just going to come back a little bit in time to somewhere near the beginning of this clip. Okay, so what we've got here are three concurrent indoor shots. So let's say that we wanted to actually apply an effect that uh, that was that went commonly over all three of these of these shots. For example, a color correction. Uh, maybe there's a little bit too much saturation, a little bit too much pink in this um, in this shot. Maybe we could get the contrast a little bit better. So we'll have a look at that. Okay. So the way to do that, um, I mean, again, there's a couple of ways of doing it. I'll show the best, the way that I find the the best, which is to add another track. So I just click new, add new track. I'm adding a video track, 
Uh, so I'm going to select that and I'm just going to rename it uh, Sequence Effects. Okay. So I'm going to just come to the beginning of this um, of this clip. Got it zoomed in quite a bit. I think maybe I can reduce the magnification a little bit so we can see this. Okay. So here's the beginning of the clip. Okay. So this is my sequence effect. So I'm going to apply. Um, I'll, I'll apply a grade node here. Okay. Now, because it's on its own track, this time I can actually move it around a little bit. So it's actually occupying the entire sequence because I've applied it to the sequence. So if we go back to the beginning, you can see that I can actually drag this around. Um, because we're quite heavily we're quite heavily magnified in, it's probably not that easy to do that. But because my cursor was actually on that cut point, it's probably quite easy to dock that. But another thing that I can do is I can come to the end where the where the uh, effect no longer needs to be in play. So, let's get to that cut point just by nudging one frame at a time. There we go, so that's the last frame. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select my razor tool and I'm just going to hover over that cut point there and cut it. And then go back to my selection tool and just delete the surplus. So what I've got now is an effect that is sitting over all three of those clips. Okay, so um, so let me apply an effect to this now. Okay, so I'll get my uh, grade node back in here. I'm going to affect the black point and the white point first of all. So I'll just uh, I'll just select my black point and I'll pick a, an area that I think is black within the shot. Um, Q there just to bring my selection up and I'm just drawing up a little box in that area so I've defined that area as black I'm going to do the same with white I probably need to just to zoom in a little bit I'm looking for an area of the t-shirt that's probably on the brighter side so maybe uh, maybe this area here so I'll select the white point and then just select an area there okay and close that one off so we can see straight away that I've got myself some good contrast there if I disable it and enable it you can see the difference there. It's still a little bit on the pink side for me, so I'm just going to come into the game and just reduce the red a little bit. And then I'll do something similar on the gamma, the midtones. Okay, and I'm just going to reduce the multiplication just to darken the shot a little bit. Just give the uh, give the impression that it's slightly darker than it is. Okay. I think maybe it's still a little bit oversaturated. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll apply a second effect, and it's the same process. Um, I'm working on the sequence, and I'm going to put a color correction in, in here this time. Um, I'll just use the I'll just use the trims for this. So I'll just uh, move that out of the way and get my razor tool, and I'll just cut on the. Uh, I just cut on the on the on the front and the back of this. So I'll just put my cursor there. Cut. Put my cursor there. Cut. And then oh, I obviously didn't didn't cut there. Didn't complete that. That's worked. And then just delete out that excess at both ends. And I'm just going to use the color correction uh, node just to uh, just to bring the master saturation down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so what I can do now is I can just fl little flick a little bit through these clips just to make sure that I've got kind of like a uniform uh, correction going through there. I think that's pretty good. Okay. I think maybe, maybe that cut from there to there. Just looking at those cushions. No, I think it's okay. But if, uh, if for example, I, I felt that maybe there was a little bit more pink in that one than in that one, then what I could do at that particular point is find the cut point. Uh, which is there 
and then uh, and then cut my grade on that point. So I've effectively created myself a new grade, which I, I can now open and maybe just reduce the the reds a little bit more. It's way too much. Something like that. Okay. So, what else can we look at? I think for regular new users, um, it should be of no surprise that you can actually also apply animations to soft effects. Um, I'm looking at this shot in particular, which is where we sort of we we come out of this relative darkness into this bright area, and maybe we could kind of create the sort of the um, the the lens adjustment that would take place and sort of and almost like personify that uh, in the in the cut. By, uh, by replicating how, how his eyes would be reacting to coming out of this relatively dark space into this bright space. So let's do that. So again, we're going to apply a, apply a, a um, I'm going to apply a grade node to this uh, to this particular shot. I can do this on a shot basis, so I don't need to use my sequence uh, for this. So I'll just apply a grade. Um, and what can I do on this? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to start this off really bright and then bring it back to normal uh, to the normal uh, light uh, as the character comes into view so let's have a look so let's bring the white point down Hit one let's take the gamma up Ooh. okay oh, that's crazy all right this is just a pure sort of arbitrary uh, effect just to show animation so I don't really need to sort of spend too much time on this so this is the this is the effect okay so uh, so he's, he's come out into the light um, and his his eyes are adjusting to the light so this is where this is where he appears so what we'll do at this particular point is set a key on the on the white point and set a key on the gamma and then we'll come forward to a point where he's actually sort of in view and we'll bring these back to the normal normal ranges and set another key okay oh for some reason that doesn't seem to have propagated so come back to the beginning of the clip and set these values again so I think I had that down at point one so it's saying that a key set which is odd and at this I think I did about 1.5 again it's saying that a key set oh there it goes so we can see that over the first part of the clip we're kind of giving, we're providing a, a sort of a visual metaphor of his eyes adjusting to the light. So that's an example of how you can animate the properties within one of the soft effects. Identical really to the way that uh, we animate particular properties of nodes inside the regular Nuke scripts. And again, if I want just to reinforce that further, um, I could maybe uh, change the interpolation of that animation. So I'll come into window, uh, where's the dope sheet, bring the dope sheet out and maybe just expand it a little bit, uh, just type F to frame the keyframes, I think I'll need to open the properties up and again F to frame those keyframes, so there's my start keyframe, there's my end keyframes. Uh, so maybe I can also uh, do the same in the uh, so I could I could obviously change the timing in in here. Uh, also bring up the curve editor and uh, maybe just make a slight adjustment to the uh, to the curve. So maybe I could just drag that down and make it sort of start quickly and then and then slowly adjust. And similarly with the so there's the white point and the gamma. So kind of create that effect so that the effect is sort of sudden and then gradually eases off so we don't get that sort of that linear effect on there. OK. 
Okay, so what we should see there is we should see that result acting quite quickly and then over, over that period there much more gradual. Okay, let's just play that out. Kind of works, but uh, you know, it was just arbitrary anyway. So anyway, I'll just uh, I'll just delete that out, and that obviously uh, shows how to delete a, uh, a soft effect as well. Okay, so I hope you found those little tips useful, and that you'll be able to apply those to your own project.